make believe Why do they feel so real If it's all in my head Why is it breaking my heart All right, and today, today we're with Richard Lynch. Richard, uh, welcome. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate you coming in today. Um, you know, although we're all pretty much stuck at home, uh, I still appreciate it. You could you bet. could you tell me? You know, we'll just get it right out of the way uh, with everything going on right now. How how has that affected your your plans uh, currently? Well, it's been a little rough on the uh, on the financial thing, but you know what? In all honesty, I have sat here and I wrote some great country songs. I've uh, been inspired to, to write songs that maybe I wouldn't have had time uh, any otherwise. I own a farm here in southwestern Ohio where I'm from, and, you know, I can get inspired pretty easy. So, in all honesty, it's been a blessing. I just I just keep writing good country songs and make the best of it. Does, does the writing come easy to you? Well, you know, I have to be inspired. I, I have been known to sit down and, and write a song, but it seems like the best songs are the ones that I really see and feel and live. And, uh, you know, if I see something that just hits me, it seems like that seems to be the better song that ultimately, ultimately come out of it. I was going to ask you, I'm going to jump down my questions here. So it, all your songs have, have like, um, really great stories to them. Is that something that, that has always been a big part of your music? I like for it to be a story because, you know, if, if the listener is out there and they can connect with that music, um, I've had people say, Hey, Richard, I heard this song and it's almost as if you wrote it for me. Mm. And that's the biggest compliment I think I can ever get because, you know, you connected with that listener and, uh, you know, I, I like my music to be real. I like for it to be heartfelt with emotion. And if you can put all of that in your music, ultimately your, your listeners and your fan will connect with you. How did you get involved in, in performing? Well, I was born into it. My, my dad was an incredible singer, entertainer in the uh, southwestern Ohio area here. And, uh, you know, I knew at a young age that's something I really wanted to do. Um, I, I was really lucky. Um, at the ripe old age of eight years old, uh, my dad invited me on to a show that he was doing. I had no idea that he would be getting me on a stage with him. He was uh, opening up a, a, an act, a show for a guy named Porter Wagner. Now, Porter Wagner had a bunch of huge hits in the 60s and 70s, and here I am, an eight-year-old kid in the, in the audience watching my dad perform with this guy I watch on television every Saturday night. So I'm thinking, my goodness, my dad must be somebody. Well, along about a half hour into the show, I had no idea, but he pointed down to my mother and said, send up Richard up here on the stage. So I got up on stage, and <laughs> I sang an old Buck Owen song with my dad. And as you might imagine, uh, an eight-year-old kid, it, it went over really well with that audience. And so I, I was bit pretty early by the country music bug. And you, you loved it right away. You had no nerves or were, were you didn't even know any better to have nerves? Well, at that point, I, I, you know, I, didn't know, I did not know any better. I just got up and had fun because I was, had the comfort of my dad right there with me. You know, you know I, I've been pretty fortunate. I've never had you know, much stage fright. I've, I've kind of realized that, you know, just get up and do your thing and enjoy, and most people will appreciate you and love you for it, you know. So when did you, when did you make that choice that you wanted to do this like, professionally and be paid for it? Well, you know, I uh, I grew up on a farm, and I was always making money farming, bailing hay, and working. And I, I found out at at a little early age in high school, they're going to pay me money to play my guitar. So hey, this this makes pretty good sense. Go make some money and have fun doing it. So, <laughs> do you do you remember the first time you heard your so a song of yours on the radio? I do. Um, it, this was way back in the uh, in the eighties, and uh, I had written a song and was getting some area success with it and I had recorded it and uh, we were on the road uh, to a South Carolina gig and here I am leaving Ohio and and we're on the east coast going towards South Carolina and this little old station from nowhere is playing one of my songs and I almost wrecked my truck I'm like that's me what are they doing playing my music on this station uh, that was pretty thrilling is it the music business today, is it, um, obviously everything's digital and you can go on YouTube, you can go on Spotify. Um, so how has that changed for you over the years? 
Well, you know, it's a it's a double edged sword. You know, we um, we had the ability to get our music heard out there to people all over the world, which we would have never had that capability before. But it's also created, you know, um, so so much easy access access to our music that it's you know not really a whole lot of money in the downloads and so forth. So, yeah, I'm getting a lot of more a lot more attention and a lot more airplay and and interest than I would have had. But you know, like I say, the uh, the the financial end of things is not like it should uh, should have been or used to be. I should say. Is is that in performing now? Like, is that where where somebody like you can go out and that's where you make your money in doing shows? Absolutely. You know, we 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 are very fortunate um, that we have. My wife is an incredible marketing uh, person. She has the ability to come up with little things that uh, you know when we go to our, do our shows, we'll. We'll have a lot of T-shirts and 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 CDs and all kinds of little Richard Lynch band trinkets that she has, and so that creates another level of uh, abil- ability to raise some money. And I'm very fortunate because you know she has that marketing uh, direction that a lot, I guess a lot of folks don't necessarily have. So it's created some opportunities there financially. So you guys do it on your own. There's no you don't have any other. Um you know, the, they're not a publisher helping you. It's, it's you and your wife doing everything. Right. Well, we own our own company, our own publishing, and we have our, we have a, uh, you know, a fence, we have what we call fence row records, which, uh, you know, we have our own recording little, little network right there. So everything is in house, which also kind of keeps the costs down. Nice. Um, so yeah, we're, we're, we're independent uh, artists that, uh, you know, believe in the music because we, there's a, for sure, a fact. There's a lot of folks out there that's really hungry for, for that traditional country music, and so we do what we love to do, and then we feel as if you know we're giving something to some folks that they wouldn't be getting just anywhere. I know there's other artists out there that's doing traditional country, but you know I feel like there's such a need for it, and um, you know I, I just want to keep that traditional sound alive, and with the intention that maybe the next generation will kind of gravitate to that sound as well. For somebody like me, you know, it, it's it's so simple. I just turn on the computer or go on my phone and I can pop up, uh, you know, one of your songs and um, that's it. But there is a, a lot more that goes into it for you to, to get the song to that point. Could you could you take us, you know, briefly through you write a song? How, how do you get it to the to point A to point B for we, when we can listen to it? Well, you know, we kind of touched on it right from the beginning. The the song for me is based on an inspiration or something I lived on. And to take that and, and grab my guitar and put uh, my thought to paper. And then I'll take my recording device and and then I'll, you know, I'll, I'll get that song sounding like I want it. And at that point, then we make our connections with our studio friends in Nashville. And they'll chart um, all the music that I am playing uh, with the Nashville charting system will uh, schedule a date um, you know six weeks or two months or three months out in the future where we can get in the studio and these amazing musicians will listen to my recording with that chart that our producer just made and within just a matter of uh, you know short time we have a song that is in, has been created which would have never been created had it not been for me sitting down and writing that just a few, you know, a few weeks or a few months earlier. But these wonderful musicians have this ability to hear what I do on my guitar and take their precise, you know, their their musicianship and put it to what I am playing and give us all this magical recording that's just phenomenal to listen to. That's amazing. Do you do you have time to actually step back and? and realize what you've created and how it helps so many people? You know, I, I, I tell my wife often, it's like, it's hard to believe that, you know, from our kitchen table now, our, our music and our thoughts and our, our inspiration is being heard virtually in 60, 70, 80 different countries around the world. And when you, and when you think about that just for a moment, how many people that touches and how many people that reaches, it's, it's remarkable. And it all all became, you know, clear. Or I had the ability to do it from one guy, and I'll I'll I'll, I'll give my my dad credit because 
he uh, he was the one that really got me interested in this music thing. And so, yeah, I had a talent and I, I, I love my the fact that I can do this, but I owe it all to him. That's amazing. Um, what challenges do you, does, does an artist face nowadays uh, other than financially? And I'm, I'm referring to, uh, you know, now we have the virus that we're dealing with, but in general that we might not know about. Well, challenges can be in a lot of shapes, forms, and fashions. You know, we um, we we don't have a you know a huge marketing budget. We're, what we do is you know we're independent artists, so you, you know you're limited out of the gate as to what you can do and who you can reach. Um, y- you know, we we like to be able to get our music heard on a lot of radio stations, and unfortunately, um, a, a independent artist doesn't necessarily have the ability to get that, uh, you know, that big mainstream radio to play your music. That's a big challenge. There is some radio stations around the country and around the world that are actually playing our music. And I, when I say radio stations, I mean virtual stations that have the this jockey and thing. And that's becoming fewer and fewer. But that's really the hardest thing that an independent artist can do is to get their music heard on the radio. Um, like I say, we're doing some of it. And uh, the more we do it, the, the you know, the, the better, further along we have getting it on the air. But that's really been the hardest thing to do to get our music really heard out there. How can how can people how can we help an independent artist out right now? Um, go online and, you know, um, if they hear our music and they they like what we're doing, you can go online and all these, uh, you know, social media spots, Reverb Nation, uh, Spotify, um, all the, the great music spots and, um, you know, like us and order some of our music. And, um, you know, that's really the biggest thing that we can do. And I, I understand from some friends that, you know, these, these major markets, there's only a few of them left really. And that's in Nashville, they pay close attention to what uh, the social media is doing. So if you have a, uh, an independent artist that's creating some waves and making some interest out there around the world, you know, you can actually do yourself a favor by having your fans, um, you know, get the word out because then all of a sudden these um, these major labels take note of that. So there's always that chance that either either I could get recorded or some of my, my songs could be pitched to some other artist. So that would help me be very helpful. Absolutely, yeah. And we're gonna put all your links up. And I'm I'm telling you, I was on uh, your YouTube, and uh, your some of your songs are amazing. They're, they're great. Um, you know, I wouldn't know of those songs unless people share them. So definitely, you know, click share, subscribe to your channel and get all get all of your stuff out there. Um, what what songs are you most proud of? Well, you know, I I'm a really patriotic kind of guy. Um, I I really believe in stuff that, you know, that shows how much I appreciate our country and how much I appreciate our veterans. And. You know, I got a couple songs that I have written that have written, um, you know, that lean toward that, like American Proud and and Love Tattoo. Love Tattoo is a song that I, I co-wrote, and it's just makes mention and appreciation of our military men and women. That's just something that I'm really proud of because, you know, uh, I can take that music and give it toward a good cause that physically and actually helps people. And uh as far as I'm concerned, we can't do enough to help our, our men and women of the military. So that's something I'm really proud of. How about your favorite artist? Do you have any? Oh, yeah. I, uh, I grew up listening to all kinds of, uh, you know, traditional country artists and so forth in the household. My, my, I mentioned my dad was such a great singer. But, you know, um, if I, I, could, I can't pick it down to narrow it down to just one artist. I have to narrow it down to two. Um, my biggest all-time favorite as a youngster would be a guy named Conway Twitty. I just absolutely love his heartfelt devotion and delivery of his vocals. And, and then I got a little older, and a guy named Keith Whitley absolutely blew me away with his music. And so to this day, those two guys, when I hear their music, I get, you know, I can get my hair standing up on the back of my neck because they are that powerful, that emotional. And that's the amazing thing about music. Um, you know, whatever type of music it is, it can it can bring about emotions, many different types of emotion. So absolutely, Richard, you also have a TV show, traditionally Lynch. Uh, what's it like trying to uh, help and collaborate with other artists? It can be really satisfying and gratifying, especially a younger artist, because you know, 
we um, we don't necessarily have the opportunities now um, that I did as a youngster. And by that, I mean, you know, I used to I, I cut my teeth growing up and playing music in all the honky tonks and nightclubs. And they don't have that nowadays. You know, you, we had a lot of fun and, and I was paid to get better. And, you know, a lot of the youngsters today don't necessarily have that ability um, to play in all the honky tonks and so forth like I did. So if you've got an artist out there that has that passion and you can see pretty quickly um, in an artist whether they really want to do this or not, if, if they really want to do it, and I'm and I'm referring to the folks that want to traditional, keep traditional country music alive, I'm all in for helping them and I'll do what I can to make sure that the artist has an opportunity. It's amazing what the, what helping somebody ultimately leads to help yourself. I, I, I don't do that for that reason. I, if I somewhat find somebody I believe in and I want to help them, but that being said, you know, you, you can hit your wagon with an artist and next thing you know, we're, we're, we're doing a duet together or we're, we're playing together and ultimately we both are being rewarded because of I decided to help somebody. Who are some of those artists that we should There's look out for? Lady in our, there's a young lady out there just turned 19 years old and for a couple of years now um i uh, she's in southwestern ohio and the first time i heard her sing i was absolutely blown away because she sounded like uh an old an old country star from back in the 60s connie smith and connie smith is currently married to marty stewart and you know they they're on the grand Ole opry often and this young lady has absolutely blown me away, and uh, I've had her do several uh, shows with me. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know whether I should mention her name or not because I haven't got permission. I, I should at some point ask her, can I use her name on the air? But, and I will in the future. But, <laughs> but it's just one of those things that I really enjoy working with younger artists like that. So who everybody else who doesn't know, uh, you were inducted into the 2019 Ohio Country Music Hall of Fame. Uh, which is amazing. Um, what did that feel like? Oh, you talk about blowing me away. I, you know, I, I, I do the music because I love it. And the fact that someone thinks enough of my music to nominate me for any award, I don't care what it is. It's just so humbling. Um, I, I don't do it for feathers in my hat. I don't do it for, you know, the accolades and the awards and that's all nice but i do it because i love it but if somebody thinks enough of me to you know to nominate me or give me a situation where i'm in an inducted into some kind of a prestigious uh, you know place like that there i'm just blown away and so grateful i mean i came from an old an old farm boy that uh, that loves music and and it's amazing how many people are really gravitating toward that traditional sound these days so every everything that comes my way i'm just so thankful for that's great do you enjoy traveling i do i love joy i love getting out there and hitting the road and meeting people and shaking hands and hugging their necks and you know that might come to an end here at least in the next <laughs> near future but but uh, you know i i'm i'm blown away when people walk up to me and they spend their money to come to my show or they buy our music or i've had people say well you know i i took this week for vacation to come that I was going to come see you play and knowing you're going to be here in our area. And it just blows me away when people tell me that. Um, and so, you know, it's really gratifying and, uh, and, and so much, uh, so much fun to get to meet these people. And, you know, w whether they really know that artists or not, it's one thing, but they think they do. And that's to see them, Tell, tell people, hey, I know Richard, or I know Rhonda, or I know Ronnie, or whatever artist it is out there, you know, that gives them heart, their heart, you know, some, some bragging rights, and it should be, you know, because ultimately, you got fans, and, and if your fans are with you, you become friends, and I just love to see that whole, that whole thing, you know, come to, come to fruition. What, what are some of your favorite cities to go to and perform? Ah, uh, man, you, you're not going to believe this, but some of the, the some of the break, the the best places in the world to play are, are in Michigan. I, I have some huge fans in Michigan and in Texas, of course, in Ohio. I'm from Ohio, but mm -hmm. you know, if, if you have to pick a spot, I believe Texas and Michigan would be the two places that I really love going to because the people there are just so appreciative of this music. And people say, "Why Michigan?" I can't give you that answer. And when you hear Texas, they think, "Well, yeah, 
Texas, they want to hear real country music. I get that. But when you say Michigan, I can't give you a definitive reason why. But the fans in Michigan are just crazy over country music. I love playing up there. That's amazing. Is it, That's where Kid Rock is from, I believe, right? Yeah, you're right. Yep. Um, what what advice could you give to somebody young? What the, the Well, the young woman you were just talking about who's 19. What advice can you give to somebody like that who's trying to get into the music business in well, today's world? I, I always say this when I'm asked this. For a youngster, surround yourself with people who believe in you. Um, don't take no for an answer. And it's amazing how much you'll get done if you've got a musician friend or a band member that really wants to see you succeed. And it's sad to say, but not everybody wants to see you succeed. So don't, don't listen to the negativity, you know, be, be strong and surround yourself with people that want to see you do well. And it'll be amazing what will come of that. That's great. I, that you actually just went right into my next question. So um, for any artist, you know, they're putting themselves out there. Your songs, I'm sure mean so much to you, each one. Um, how do you deal with, uh, now with social media, just people being negative and, um, and not all of them, but some of the negative comments, how do you deal with that? Write a song about them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I refer to them as keyboard cowboys and I have a song called keyboard cowboy. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> so if, if you find, and there's not many of them out there, but if you got somebody that's being disparaging or, or has a, uh, you know, an agenda that aren't, that isn't necessarily in your best interest, just refer to richardlynchband.com and hey, you can listen to Keyboard Cowboy and that will shut most of them up. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I'm going to check that out. We'll put that up here. Um, so hopefully in the next few weeks, this is all over with and you guys can get back uh, to doing what you do best and same with us. What are your, what are your plans once everything clears up? What can we well, look for? We're very fortunate. Our, our summer is almost full. Um, unfortunately, we've lost all our March, April dates. Um, and everybody, I'm not the only person. I think everybody has. Um, as we speak, our May is still full. And we think that we're going to be able to start traveling and performing again in May. I guess that's yet to be determined. But uh, whatever ultimately we're allowed to do, I'm grateful for the fact that I get to do what I love to do and meet these wonderful folks. And, you know, ultimately we get to become friends. And if you're friends with people, uh, you have, got, you have made something that's for life. Nice. And Richard, do you have any new music coming out? We should look forward to. Absolutely. I'm currently working on a brand new album. I have four of the 12 songs recorded. I, I am scheduled to be in uh, Nashville again. Um, in may uh for another four of the songs i have written all 12 of them uh, we do we do songs in four songs uh sessions uh and then we put the uh the uh, album together all 12 tracks uh we intend to have that released early in 2021 um I, i'm i am fortunate because I, I i surround myself with people that are talented not only great musicians but they have the ability to write and if you can if you can meet with people and 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 have that personal connection and then start writing and bouncing ideas off each other it's amazing what kind of great music will come of that because we all got experiences that we can share and uh i'm i'm lucky at my my guitar player uh tim bennington and my piano player tony williams have been writing with me and i'm really excited about this new album coming out because it's some of the best music i've ever wrote great and where where can we find you where can everybody just go, go? To, just go to richardlynchband.com and uh, you'll see um all the all, you know all the information out there you need to know about me and our our dates and you know our music and t-shirts and all that good kind of thing and um you know there's there's some things in there that uh talks about the the uh the independent country music hall of fame and there's some articles in there about the ohio country music hall of fame we've been inducted into so you know a lot of things that's happened um in the last few years that i'm very proud of and anybody wants to read about it they're all in there i appreciate it richard i'm richard lynch uh it's an honor to have you it's great to speak to you um and, you know i appreciate it well thank you for having me sir i hope we cross paths in the near future 
Absolutely. Come down here to Pennsylvania. I'd love to, I'd love to see you. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll make that happen. Great. I appreciate it, Richard. Thank you very much. Bye, Bye now. Yep.